Hi, welcome to the second tutorial on creating an Apple Catcher game using Wolf.js. Uh, in the previous tutorial, um, we set up the backdrop and we created variables for high score and score. And we also added the text that will display on screen uh, and created the Apple and player objects, which is um, basically a circle and a rectangle for the game. Okay, in the second part of this tutorial, uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, specify the speed for the Apple to fall. Uh, we'll make the um, player object follow the mouse on screen, left and right across the screen, uh, and we'll also um, make the apple fall and uh, detect if the um, app uh, apple is uh, touching the player. Okay, so first thing we need is a variable for the um, speed of the apple to fall. Now we could just, um, in, the, in a forever loop, manually say uh, how fast we want the apple to fall. But if we want to make the apple fall um, like gradually pick up speed over time, then we need a variable that we can update. So we'll create a variable called apple speed. And to start with, we'll just set that to eight. Um, okay, and to make the apple fall and to check whether the apple is hitting the player or if it's fallen, off, um, fallen past the bottom of the screen, uh, and all of that, what we need to do is add a forever loop. Okay, so we can start typing in forever and then just click on that block. And um, the, pretty much uh, most of the code that we'll add now is going to be inside this forever loop. So basically what we can say is forever, make the uh, player's position on the x axis, so player.x equal to mouse x. And that's all we need to do to make the player object, this green rectangle, move with the mouse left and right across the screen. Just that one line of code. Okay, now we only want it to move on the horizontal X axis, but if we wanted it to also follow the um, Y uh, position of the mouse, we could say player.y equals mouse y. And that would have this effect. Okay, but we don't want that. Well, you might, but I won't add that to the game. So I'll leave that out and just have player.x equals mouse.x. And we'll also say apple.y minus equals apple speed. So that will make the apple fall down on the y axis at the um, speed specified in the apple speed variable. So um, just watch that again. Apple starts at the top and starts falling. Okay. Um, next thing we need to do is detect if the apple is touching the player. So we can add an if block. We can type if and hit that block. And in these brackets here, the condition will be if apple is touching the player. So apple dot touching and then in brackets, uh, player. Okay. And so if this condition here evaluates to true, and make sure that you close all those brackets there, have matching closing brackets. Uh, if that condition is true, then apple.x, so position on, on the x-axis, will be set to random position again between minus 160 and 160 on the x-axis. Okay, so um, we'll just watch that. Okay, so it sets it to a random position on the x-axis. You might have noticed it just kind of moved a little bit there. Um, but we'll also set it to go up the top as well. So apple.y equals uh, max y minus 50. So we're just moving the apple back to where it started, which was a random position on the x-axis between uh, minus 160 and 160, and a max a y position of max y minus 50. So as soon as the apple hits the player, we're just moving it back up the top again to fall, again to keep falling. So um, there we go. So we've got the movement working now. All we need to do now is increase the score and also increase the high score. Uh, and then basically end the game if the apple falls past the bottom of the screen. So what we can say now is increase the score by one. So that's score plus plus. Update, oops, what happened there? So, okay, so score plus plus, um, we need to update the score text on screen. So we can say score text dot, uh, score text dot text equals score plus score. 
Okay, so now the score is increasing as well. All right, so in increase the score, display the updated score on the screen. And now what we can do is check if the score is greater than high score, um, then start also updating the high score. So within this if block, we can add, or within this if statement, we can add another if statement or a nested if statement, which is basically just one if statement inside another if statement. So if the apple is touching the player, we're going to make the apple go back up the top and fall again. We'll increase the score and update the score on the screen. But then we'll also check if, so we can add another if block and make sure that um, all your, uh, you've got the right number of close, opening and closing brackets. And so uh, this condition will be if the score is greater than high score, and if that's true, then we'll update the high score to be equal to uh, the current score um, that is greater than the existing high score. And we'll also update that in um, our local storage. So we'll say local storage dot set item. So before, when we uh, at the start of the game, we, we get the, the high score from local storage. So we say local storage dot get item, use a high score and put it into the high score variable in this game. And if there's no high score, we set it to zero. But now what we're doing is um, we're saying set item user high score to be the current high score in this game. So local storage dot set item user high score in quotes and then comma inside those brackets high score. So there's two parameters here. We're setting this item user high score to this item, which is um, the high score variable. Okay, um, and then once we've updated the high score variable, we can um, show that on the screen by updating the high score text to say high score um, and then the actual high score variable. Okay, so let's check if that works. Um, we'll just change the code a little bit so the game restarts. Okay, so score is going up. High score is still 21 from um, the other game that was created that used the same um, name in the local storage. Um, but once we reach this high score of 21, the high score should start going up. So now it's 22, 23, 24. Okay, so that's working. All right, um, next thing we can do is check whether the apple has fallen below the bottom of the screen. So outside of both of these if blocks, which ends here, we can say add another if block, and we can say if apple, so the condition will be if apple dot y, so it's apple's y position, is below the minimum y value, or below the bottom edge of the screen, so less than min y. If that's true, then we'll show the game over text, and the play again text as well will show up. Okay, so we can play this game, and as soon as we miss an apple, it says game over. All right, so um, now we're able to end the game. The next thing that we need to do is basically allow the player to start the game again. So outside of that if statement, we can add some more code, and this code is going to um, detect a mouse click. So if you click on documentation and go to, um, uh, uh, not control, so if you go to events and have a look in the events, have different events here. We have on mouse down, so when the mouse clicks on something. We have on mouse up, so when the mouse button is released, we can do something. We have on mouse move, so when the mouse is moving, we can run some code. Um, we can check if a specific object has been clicked, or a specific sprite. We can check if a key on the keyboard has been pressed, or if a specific keyboard has been pressed. So um, there are different events there that we can use, but what we're going to use is on mouse down. So we'll check if the mouse has been clicked down, and if so, that means the user wants to start a new game, so we'll restart the game. So we can copy this block here. Whoops, don't wanna leave this page. Copy this block here, paste it inside the forever loop. So we're still inside the forever loop, but outside of any if statements. 
and we say on mouse down and inside these curly brackets here we're going to specify what we want to do and by the way if you're not sure what this is this is actually a comment so uh, there's different ways you can write comments in your code basically just notes in your code that don't actually impact the way the game works um, it's not going to run the comments or anything like that they're just there to explain what's going on so you can write uh, lines that uh, comments that go across multiple lines between a forward slash and a star and a closing star and forward slash or you can also write comments uh, after two forward slashes but that's just a single line comment so if you're writing a comment on one line you can write it like that if you're writing a comment on multiple lines you can write it like that okay but we'll get rid of this comment here because we actually do want to do something inside this block and um, so what we'll do when we click the mouse down is we'll set the score back to zero we'll update the score text as well to display the new score um, we'll hide the game over text once the game starts again and the play again text as well um, and we'll set the apple on the x-axis we'll um, make it go to a random position again up the t um, or between the left side of the screen and the right side of the screen between those two points and the apple will go up the top of the screen as well okay um, and we'll also set the apple speed to be equal to 8. Now, at the moment, the apple speed is already 8, so we don't actually need to add that line of code there. But if we want to increase the speed of um, the apple over time, um, then what we'll need to do is make sure that when the game starts again, we set it back to its original speed. Um, so if the player is playing for a very long time and it becomes really fast, we don't want them to start again at a really fast speed. Okay, so let's check that now. If we click, there we go, the game starts again. So let the game end, click, and it starts again. All right, so um, we're finished with this forever loop. Okay, so all of the code that needs to run inside the forever loop is now there. The last little block of code we can add is we can say every, and we can maybe say something like every five seconds make the apple speed increase by um, one so we can say apple speed plus plus okay so that means when this game is um, playing or running every five seconds the speed is going to increase by one so it starts off at eight it'll become nine ten and so on and you can probably see now that it's getting faster and faster. Okay, there we go. And then when we click to start again, it starts off at that slower speed of eight because we've set on mouse down, set the apple speed back to eight. All right, that is all of the code for the Apple Catcher game. Um, that's it. So it's basically how to create an Apple Catcher in, um, whoops, an Apple Catcher game in WolfJS um, and make sure you save your code. That's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.